around three years ago here at BBTV, I was well into my soapbox stance that video marketing was the growth area of effective communication. Now, many leaders poo-pooed the idea of peering on a camera. Then came the pandemic. Welcome to this BBTV Resonance Trilogy coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. With the pandemic suddenly came the business world awoke to the power of video. Hesitant in use at first, then an avalanche of what I think is often poor creation and poor delivery. So I wanted to help you get on the right track with this very exciting medium. My guest today is an established TV director and video producer and author of the video content book, Resonance, from smallfilms.com. Let's meet George Hughes. Hello, George. Hi, Malcolm. Thanks very much I'm, for having me today. I'm so looking forward to our chat because, I'm sorry, I've jumped in there, George, and that's because I, I, I just think that video is such an exciting medium and now it's open to all of us you know i, I just remember i had a, an hour's video made by bbc resources i think 20 years ago and it cost them 90 grand then and it made took months to make and now you and i can be chatting for the next half hour together and essentially it's very little cost george yeah. like you though i've worked amongst some of the best on screen personalities around the world and i think there's always a common theme summarized by the comedian Jimmy Carr, who says, arrive ready. I think that too many business people are, are falling into the trap that you can wing it on video. But I think preparation is paramount. And that's no pun, by the way, on a, uh, a, a movie company. Before we get into discussing mistakes and engagement, where do you think a company needs to start in its video marketing strategy? Is it, for example, knowing purpose, understanding the medium or having medium training? I think um, spot on the money, by the way, I think talking about the idea that the video is suddenly accelerated and things which used to cost an arm and a leg are now very achievable on, on quite a low budget. And they're very easy to do. And the, the technology is advanced at a rapid rate. I think for any company now looking to embrace video as a medium, you have to think of it more as more than just a singular tool that you use. It's not just a nice to have a box to tick something that you you know someone else has it so you have it it has to be an entire strategy in its own right that then complements everything else you're doing so the first most important thing if you're going to embark on video is you really need to ask yourself the question why am i doing this what is the objective that i am trying to um, achieve with this video is it we need to grow our sales do we need to speed up our sales cycle do we want to get into different markets reach different demographics whatever that might be it's important to know that because video then is that tool that's going to achieve um, your your goals and ultimately in my view it's by far the most powerful medium that you have at your disposal i think at all the tactics available right now it is by far the best it's it's great for building trust with your audience it's great for grabbing people's attention and it's phenomenal for explaining the benefit of your services in a, the most concise way. So that's it. Mainly, I think it's just start with a solid strategy. Do not just wing it. <laughs> Make sure that you tie it into your business objectives. Yeah, so it's an excellent conversation. You know, I'm just thinking there when you were talking about the power of the medium. That's the old saying, if a picture's worth a thousand words, you know, what's a video worth? Uh, I think somebody said a couple of million. Is that would you say that's about right? I can completely understand that because every single frame of the video that you're showing ultimately is uh, is 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 a, a, in its own right a, a way of displaying everything that you want to talk about. So you've got on on each frame of video, you've got imagery, you've got potentially text, you've got um, uh, music, you've got emotion, all these sort of things. So that's why they talk about you know picture speaks a thousand words this this could be a million um i think you know you just have to look at video as a general medium forget about business just think about the way we as consumers are now using video it's been accelerated during the pandemic the adoption of digital um now we have netflix of course that's been going for a while mm -hmm. bbc iplayer um youtube all those conventional places you expect it but then think about things like apps on your phone you know, videos that we take ourselves and, and text to friends, 
any popular site you might go on, whether you want to find out about the latest car reviews or you want to discover the latest fashion trends or just how to do gardening in the right way, there's going to be videos for you on virtually every single website you go to. That's the consumer trend. It's growing and growing and growing. I think video now accounts for at least, I think, 80% of all the internet traffic that's out there. If, if consumers are embracing it, as advertisers, which every company mm-hmm. is, you have to follow what they're doing. And that's the trend. So you, if you go where they are, if they're watching videos, you need to be there doing the same thing. And, and that's that's why video is now such an important marketing tool for, for everybody. Now, you, you said earlier that obviously part of your strategy should be known the purpose of what you're wanting to uh, to do with the, with the video. Is also that something you should also be considering as regards your audience as to why the audience will view your video? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in the book, I talk about the sort of the, the techniques that we use in our kind of little roadmap of how you construct a video project. But for me, it starts right at the beginning. You say, what's what's the vision for this project? And I mentioned about objectives. Yes, need to know those. Outcomes, how are you going to track the impact of your video campaign? Literally, what KPIs are you going to put in place that you can measure? And then the third part to that vision is saying, who are our customers? Who are we actually trying to reach here? Because to create a video that would resonate with someone, you know, hit them deep down, you know, it speaks to them directly. The more granular you can get with your audience, the better. When it comes to online, that's really important. So don't say, oh, we're just making this for everybody out there. Oh, well, like customers, you know, we, we we serve everybody. That may well be true, but you probably need to look at segmenting those those customers and saying, okay, well, if a big cohort is women over the age of 30, then that the video that we design that, that is for them is going to resonate far better than a more generalistic one. Same if you said go for the same, the same but for uh, men. And if it was from a different part of the country, that might resonate differently to say London versus the North, you know, US mm. East Coast versus US West Coast. You know, it, it's important to think about that. Audience is key because if you don't understand your audience, you can't tell a story that will they will relate to and that it will resonate with them. So, yeah, mm. you're spot on. Audience is so important. <laughs> I, I do think that video can cause faster action as well. Um, I was talking to a, a guest in uh, in Jerusalem recently, and he's written hundreds of articles on LinkedIn and so on like that. You know, with a little bit of response, we did one video and he had 9,000 views and contacts almost the next couple of, in the next couple of days. So you can cause action faster, can't you? Absolutely. And I think... It's important to, when you think about creating video, don't just chase what I like to call vanity metrics. So Mm. some people get overly obsessed with having that many views, but you've just said he had 9,000 views, but he also had lots of action that resulted uh, from that video. So think about what you want to do, because you might be targeting an audience that is, for example, your total customer base might only be 2,000 people. So you'll say going after... You know, leaders in the pharmaceutical sector, for example, that's mm. that's a small audience. So if you manage to drive 10 inquiries, you know, 100 inquiries, maybe you want, that's a massive result. So think about the end goals um, rather than just click through rates and things like this. Um, mm. But end, end of the day, video is very good at explaining things very concisely. It can be your shop window. So it's a quick snapshot of what you do. They can dig further on your website and through your marketing material for more information. But if you also want to com- explain a complex service, there's nothing quite like a one to two minute video script for condensing your your thinking and enabling you to get to the very bare bones of what's most important about your company. And you, you can't have the luxury of an entire website full of text, so you have to get it down. And it's mm. very compelling. It's your elevator pitch at the end of the day. So it, it ends up being very powerful. Thanks, George. Now, let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, your website address, which obviously viewers, you can see on the screen behind me. But listeners, let me spell it out. It's all all the W's, all the W's dot smallfilms.com. That's easy, isn't it? All the W's dot smallfilms.com. George's book is called Resonance. Unleash your brand's potential with video. It's available in both Kindle and paperback at Amazon.
In episode two, I want to ask George to give us an overview of his five common mistakes made when creating video content. So can we do that, George? Absolutely. Can't wait.